And I'm Dr. Nicole, thank you so much for taking the time to have this ARDD sponsor interview with me. And on the behalf of the whole team of ARDD, we are more than grateful to Institute for Healthier Living, Abu Dhabi, for sponsoring us, tier two sponsors this year, because thanks to your support, we can provide even more quality content and reliable science for anybody interested in aging research and drug development. So thank you so much for your time again. And at the beginning, I would like to ask you to tell me a little bit more about the Institute for Healthier Living. What is your place in the longevity ecosystem and, and what, what would the clients benefit when they visit you? Thank you very much for that introduction. We are more than happy to both sponsor this event, participate in it, and, and help uh, spread the word. Um, ARDD, in my mind, is one of the most important conferences that, that comes through the longevity medicine space, and uh, Institute for Healthier Living Abu Dhabi is very happy to support. So your question around where we fit and who we are and how is it that we have uh, become involved with, with this uh, burgeoning field, it really starts from the need of patients. So I'm an internal medicine physician and over the last 10 years, I've served as a department chair at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. And in that role and my prior roles in academic medicine, of course, we we take care of patients, we, we, we see their, their diseases. And as a general internal medicine doctor who has a, a passion and a love for lifestyle medicine, um, I was part of the first group of physicians who were certified in lifestyle medicine in, in 2017 and really saw the beginning of that field add on to the way we approach chronic disease and really aging. And so the Institute for Healthier Living Abu Dhabi came from that. We had, uh, I had a patient uh, who came into my, to my office and told me, doctor, I don't think I need to be on these medications. I've changed my diet. I've, I've started exercising. And that was not my normal visit. <laughs> and so, of course, we had to measure. We had to, we had to do tests to make sure that that was correct. He did not need those medications. And now, eight years later, he's still off those meds and doing fantastic. And so what we've done with the Institute for Healthier Living is think about, okay, we have a population ahead of us that is aging. We have more chronic disease than ever. And those numbers continue to, to come with costs to the system. And so how can we fit into a, a new paradigm of health? Where do we fit? We know that it's not enough to just apply necessarily lifestyle medicine principles, like how do we help people with diet, exercise, sleep? Those are all important and essential and actually central to a longevity program. But at the same time, you have to bring in the precision medicine. You have to be able to measure, you have to be able to understand what's happening in the body from an aging perspective. And then you have to be able to intervene and we use uh, medications, we use supplements, we use, we use lifestyle to be able to help make those changes for patients. And then you have to remeasure and say, okay, this is actually working or not working. And this is what the Institute is really, um, is really here to do. So we have a very solid research arm where we are putting together cohorts of patients to uh, test out these, uh, these new kind of initiatives and new, and new compounds in the future. And we have a clinical care facility where patients can come in and get this kind of care now as we're developing the science and be able to apply that with our, with our scientific board, which is loaded with experts. In addition, we have an opportunity for innovation. So we have a third arm of the Institute where we're really trying to bring these technologies to Abu Dhabi, help, help um, achieve the vision of the government of the UAE to make the UAE a, a center point for innovation and, and, and science. Wow, that sounds absolutely amazing. And it just grows my heart when you say uh, how data-driven longevity medicine is, because I fully agree that without data, we can't really actually uh, be able to help the patients to the extent that they actually deserve to be helped or encouraged on their way towards healthy longevity. Absolutely. And this actually stems or uh, starts one more question, and that is, uh, when do you think your uh, youngest patient should visit the Institute? Because, uh, for example, like taking myself as a case study here, uh, I, I would do anything for my healthy longevity, but I'm only 20. So most of the uh, longevity specific tests don't really give that uh, sensible results for me. So what do you, when do you think we should start? 
You are asking a very good question. Uh, I think this is a hot topic of debate among leaders within the longevity field. And it also should be thought of in, in a personalized way. So for example, um, in my view, we know we start aging um, from birth, right? We know that. At the same time, there was a very nice paper just published uh, a few weeks ago, really showing these two inflection points where we have more accelerated aging around age 40, more accelerated aging around age 60. So that actually has opened the conversation scientifically to say, we need to be talking about this earlier and earlier. Then you look at a country like the UAE, the UAE actually presents, on a, on a, if you look at the epidemiology of the UAE, we have heart disease that is diagnosed on average 10 years earlier than North America. And so mm -hmm. rather than people coming in at, at 50 with, with heart disease, we see patients at 40. And so even the question you're asking should be, in my view, population specific or regionally uh, specific because people are aging at different acceleration rates around the world. Um, at the same time, what can we do for someone like you who's 20? We can do a lot, right? We can help you understand what your baseline is. We can help you put you on healthy path for, for habits and, and lifestyle. And as we uh, come out with more of randomized clinical trials for some of the compounds that are being um, put forward as longevity drugs and supplements, we can look within those studies to see the population range. Uh, I think what we know now is longevity is not just for older people, right? We actually do need to start earlier. And as a field, we are collecting evidence to be able to say when we should start certain interventions and when other interventions can wait. Um, so I think that's, a, that's an active question of, of discussion and, and a really good one. Um, but just like we we know that, uh, for example, a healthy pregnancy starts much much earlier in a in a woman's in a woman's life, um, that that this is the same with aging. Wow, I really like the analogy. I never thought of it this way, but because theoretically we could make a metaphor that we are pregnant with the new version of ourselves, right? To, to stretch it a little bit. And following yeah. on this uh, path of thought, uh, just like you mentioned, the paper published a few weeks ago with the two accelerated aging points, then do you think it would be most beneficial to enter just before the slope starts to get down uh, with the interventions or uh, or when the, it starts getting up to, to, to somehow boost the body's processes? Yeah, in, in, in my view, we want to get ahead of the decline. Right. So uh, everything that we're trying to do, we want to, yes, people who are already having accelerated aging, we want to reverse that. That's one population that we're focused on. But in addition, we want to be able to prevent that from the beginning. Right. Our, our best our best path here is to help prevent chronic disease from from even developing. But we don't want people to lose hope who already have chronic disease. If you already have diabetes or heart disease, there are many things we can do to help reverse that process in your body. And of course, those are the, the, um, the main diseases that are, are going to lead to, to the, the, um, the downside of aging. So we need to be able to prevent diabetes. We also need to be able to have optimal metabolic health. And what does that mean? And how do we measure it? And what are the numbers that for someone like you at age 20, we would be using for normal? I think all of this is what we are trying to do as a field to bring in expertise from the different areas to be able to set those new metrics. In traditional medicine, as an internal medicine doctor doing my training at UCSF, we did not talk about what is the optimal, what is the optimal levels. Right. We talked about what is sick. We talked about what is diagnostic, and and that is where um, that's where the field of medicine is. Okay. Wow. That's such a valuable answer here, and you know it keeps making me think that uh, it's uh, well, it's not easy, but it's definitely easier to make this choice for yourself that you want to actually achieve this healthy longevity goals when you have any idea about what is healthy longevity. And I also presume, even though uh, UAE's population, uh, I assume given the uh, government's efforts, is on a higher level of education towards longevity and general health than some other countries, then uh, still the person who would visit the institute is rather on the more uh, educated uh, uh, area, uh, I assume. So is there any way to 
to bring people into the institute so that they take care and ownership of their own healthy longevity. This is exactly what we're trying to do. And I think the, the way that we can bring in principles of lifestyle medicine, which include uh, a health coach model, which is around how do you take ownership of your health? How do you um, put together behavior change concepts so that people understand the way that they eat and breathe and, and move through the day has direct effects on their body and has direct effects on how it is that they um, how, what their health outcomes look like when they're 20, when they're 30, when they're 40, when they're 80. Um, and so, you know, the UAE is a very unique country in the sense that we have, uh, over 80% of the population are expatriates and, uh, we have a smaller number of UAE nationals and all of us are really a mini version of the world. So it's an extremely diverse place. We have people with all different genetic backgrounds and on top of that, different education levels and different um, understanding of, of what longevity means. So one of the things that we're very happy to be partnering with the um, National University of Singapore on is to uh, put forward a, a survey, which is we will be one of the um, an international consortium. There are now eight countries that are represented to actually understand what do people think about when they hear the word longevity? What does that mean to them? I think we're still understanding that knowledge base. And um, only then can we really help design policies that fit the the purpose of the of the location, because, as you said, it differs in different places. We have different needs. We're blessed in the UAE with a with a very robust healthcare system. And at the same time, longevity medicine is new everywhere. We need standards. We need to have the regulator involved. We need to be able to understand what is longevity medicine, what is not longevity medicine, how, how evidence-based are the recommendations that we're making. As an internist, I have a very clear guideline from medical societies, the, um, the American Board of Internal Medicine. You know, we have, we have clear guidelines. And longevity medicine, these are being developed. And so like anything new, we want to make sure we have uh, adherence to, to, the, to the, the science as much as possible. And at the same time, understand what are those safety parameters in those gray areas so that patients and doctors can help make decisions together around what is the best uh, path. Um, and so it's it's an exciting time to be in longevity medicine. This is the beginning of really a new era, a new uh, specialty, a new approach to medicine. Um, there are people from all different traditional medical backgrounds who are interested in longevity medicine, from neurology, internal medicine, oncology. And so I think that we are um, at the at the beginning of that paradigm shift now. And I'm I'm excited that. That, that I can be a part of it, that the Institute can be a part of it, and that we're really helping to grow the body of evidence from a scientific perspective to be able to help build toward us all having the unified understanding of what longevity medicine is and how to apply it. I'm also beyond excited to be witnessing that, the growth of a new discipline, the discipline of the future. And you mentioned behavioral changes and, uh, and legislations, and this uh, made me thinking that, of course, all the change in the longevity medicine is primarily driven by physicians who notice the changes, who notice that the sick care healthcare format uh, is not the most effective. So um, given that FDA has control over the drugs and devices, but I'm not exactly sure if there is a body like FDA who controls medical practices. So how do we ensure legislation and global standards other than the common agreement between uh, physicians? It's a, it's a very good question. So part of this is that we have our, you know, uh, uh, boards that uh, certify us within the different specialties. And the medical societies that helped um, set forward the guidelines, so the American Diabetes Society, let's say, or the um, you know European um, Cardiology Society, so that we have societies that have decided either by consensus or by 
by other methods uh, that these are the ways in which we will treat certain diseases. And we need the same for longevity medicine. This is the importance of the organizations such as the Healthy Longevity Medicine Society, because we need international collaboration. We need um, a, a, an ability to review the evidence and, and rank it according to its level of, of uh, applicability for us as physicians. We have to be able to be certified in some way so that people can actually say, I'm certified by this uh, body of, of, um, of evidence to be able to make this um, uh, an applicable. And the next question I'd like to ask is actually coming back to ARDD, because you mentioned that uh, that the eight country consortium is, is right now working on on the standards for longevity medicine. And I wonder if you as Institute for Healthy Living are open to any kind of partnerships with diagnostic firms or perhaps some, some startups to further boost the collaboration? Absolutely. So the initiatives of the um, Healthy Longevity Medical Society and the National University of Singapore and others who are doing these consortiums to help us gather information around what is um, the perception of the population of healthy longevity are extremely important. We have to have that to be able to move forward with um, our programming. At the Institute for Healthier Living, we really have three arms. So we have our research arm. The research requires technology and innovation. And we have our clinical arm. And of course, the research will feed into the clinical programming. So we are offering our patients the most up-to-date and most validated form of longevity medicine that we can possibly offer them. And in order to do that, we have to have new technology. We will be incorporating um, different types of machine learning and artificial intelligence into our programming. And the um, and in order to, to help bring in what are the diagnostics we will be using, how will we be measuring your aging velocity? What is it that we will be able to say is a marker that the intervention we're proposing works or doesn't work? And all of that is what distinguishes, I think, longevity medicine from other types of medicine. Uh, we are very open. We have a, an active innovation arm. We are in discussion already with a few companies on joint ventures. We have a, an, an ecosystem that we sit in within the UAE that fosters that kind of partnership and, and, and participation. It is a clear goal of the, of the government of the, of the UAE to bring more life sciences technology to the UAE and we are actively, uh, we're actively seeking partnerships. So absolutely. And I'm beyond sure that everybody who's listening to this and attending ARDD is already uh, very excited to, to perhaps start uh, plant the seed for this collaboration that the results of which perhaps we'll see at the next ARDDs. Dr. Nicole, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it and, and it was, the, it made my day to talk about longevity medicine. So thank you so much. And I can't wait to hear your talk at ARTD in less than a week in Copenhagen. Yes, thank you so much. We're very happy to be participating. Looking forward to seeing you in person. Thank you.